and welcome back to our final tutorial web episode on utilizing mplus to run your structural models so we've done basically everything right now and we have we're going into the final step to confirm our last hypothesis which was to determine the indirect effect um, of personal environment fit on task performance so just to have a little bit of a refresher of what we've done first we looked at the M plus environment and we looked at our data and our model. Then we estimated various competing measurement models. So we came up with our final best fitting one. From this, we changed our best fitting model into our structural model. And now we're going to look at mediation. So I presume you're already aware with regards to what mediation is and how it functions. Um, but I'm going to kind of like take our final structural model right and try and see how person environment fit relates to task performance through happiness what that actually means in normal people speak is that we want to basically say that if a person matches their job so if a creative person is in a marketing position will they become happier and because of this fit will they then also perform better so if there is a fit, people become happier and therefore they will perform better. That's the assumption that we basically want to test in our last step. Now there are various ways and means to do this. Um, I'm going to talk about two. The first one is the old traditional Baron and Kelly method, um, which we don't use anymore, but we utilize it to kind of test some assumptions. And then I'll go into showing you how to estimate um, indirect effects in M+. So Baron and Kelly basically said that there are three assumptions that you need to test in order for us to prove that there is full or partial mediation. Full mediation means, ah, I'll explain that in a minute. Um, so the first assumption that they basically said was there needs to be a direct relationship between person environment fit and task performance. Let's quickly estimate that and see what happens. So only thing that I've changed was I've taken the happiness questions out and I've regressed task performance on fit. Let's see. So here you can see there is a direct relationship and it is positive. Excellent. First assumption, check. Then it indicated that there also needs to be a direct relationship between person environment fit and your mediator okay so let's go to M plus and test this quickly again only thing I've changed was I've taken the items out for person environment fit and I've estimated task performance predicts happiness oh sorry this is the wrong one it is this one sorry uh, happiness predicts fit okay so I've run the analysis go to my standardized results here you see happiness uh, fit predicts happiness by 0 0.53 and it's significant great our second assumption is tested that's in place they also indicated there needs to be a direct relationship between our mediator and our outcome variable. And you already saw a sneak peek of that. So I just regressed task performance on happiness. And our results say, dum, dum, dum. Oops. Our results say, yes, there is one. 0 0.569. Okay. The final assumption is that when we put all of these three things together, the relationship between person environment fit and task performance needs to disappear. So if that relationship is in place between performance and happiness, if there's a direct relationship between person environment fit and task performance and between happiness and task performance, and it fully mediates, in other words, all of the energy is going through this, we have full mediation. So if we add everything into the equation, this relationship should become non-significant. And I have already tested that. So we've actually done that in our structural model already. So this is just our normal structural model from before. 
And like I said previously, take note of it. Boom. Non-significant. Task performance on fit, non-significant. So we have evidence at least for full mediation from the Baron and Kelly method. But that's not why you're here. You're here to see how to do it in M+. So we're going to take this model and we're going to estimate the indirect effect. So um, some changes in the syntax is apparent. So up until this point, everything is the same. But now, because we want to run mediation, we have to indicate, we have to let it bootstrap sample so that it runs many, many, many samples based on the data that you have to kind of see if there is one or two or whatever of them that falls outside, one of your samples outside of your assumption. So we're going to bootstrap. Um, you can do anything from five, from one to 10 billion if you want. I think I'm just gonna do 500 for now just to shorten it. And our model statement stays exactly the same. But now we have to add an extra section to our analysis, say the model indirect term. So it comes underneath the model. And here what we say is task performance indirectly affects our mediator, our in the, uh, dependent group, independent group. So we have our Y, our M and our X. So it's always have to be in this specific order. Um, it always has to be your outcome first, indirectly affects, affected by mediator and your antecedents, your independent variables, okay? The extra thing that we add now is we want to also generate confidence intervals and we want a bootstrap analysis, bias corrected bootstrap, okay? So this might take a couple of seconds. I only asked for 500. You should at least do 2000. Okay, so with all of the subsamples, let's go look. Model fit will stay exactly the same, no changes. Your standardized results should look similar. It might change in terms of significance and maybe a point somewhere, but the, the type needs to stay the same. And now we get to the things that we've asked it to estimate for us. So the total direct effect um, of task performance to uh, person environment fit, or from person environment fit to task performance, it is significant, right? Smaller than 0 0.05. And it is quite okay. So it tells us that there is something going on. Um, our indirect effect is what we are actually interested in. So this is our estimate. So this is the actual amount of indirect effect between them. So it is significant and it is a okay estimate, right? So that's the first thing that you kind of report. But that's not the only thing that we're interested in. We're interested in to see how does this change, right? So we want to look at the, the, the range of the changes that could possibly take place. So we go down to our standardized uh, confidence intervals and here is our estimates right so you scroll all the way uh, let's first look at this quickly um, you can basically see from just the standardized confidence intervals that there's also some other things going on there so we'll always want to see if this value so the 95 percent confidence interval up and down if it changes right so we can see none of these things go through zero, which is fine. But all of this comes down to this thing that we want. So you'll see here is our actual indirect effect um, estimate, right? It's the same as what we have here, right? And we want to see how does it change. So at the 95% confidence interval, lower so on the bottom end and at the top end we can see that none of this includes zero so it doesn't go through zero to get there so this isn't a minus and this isn't a plus so it is basically a very strong indicator that we have full mediation a full strong indirect effect
effect. Oh, sorry. And here I just have it in our slides for us. See? So we basically report our beta, we report um, our significance level, and we report our um, upper and lower confidence limit. So what have we done? We have now proved that there is positive relationships between personal environment fit, happiness, and task performance. And we proved that there is an indirect effect between happiness and our antecedent personal environment fit and our outcome task performance. So what, is this, what does this all mean? Like I said, when a person, when there is a strong relationship between the person and the job, um, or the work that he's doing, he's going to feel a lot happier, and because he feels a lot happier, he's going to perform a lot better. So, your homework is to go and run this model, the same model that you tested for homework previously, but now I want you to estimate the indirect effect for each one of these. And remember, you have to do it together. So you can't have one assessment and then run another model with just this. You have to do both of these together. And what I want to know is, what is your outcome? And what does it mean? All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for our introduction to M+. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Have a wonderful day.